this tutorial we'll be looking at disabilities and how the HEI can empower the disabled. So the first thing we can have a look at is poor coordination. Okay, so that could be lots of different reasons that there's poor coordination, uh, including autism, dyspraxia, and there's lots of different devices that can be used to offer support. So the first picture shows a tracker ball. So you can see that there's a ball inside a very solid looking device where the user is able to navigate the cursor using the tracker ball and it's got a lot more control than what a mouse would. You wouldn't have to move the whole device, it's just the ball that would need to be rotated in order to move. We've got a joystick which again allows the user to have more solid a grip on the device and just navigate around the screen. If the user is colorblind, and there's lots of different variations of color blindness and different colors that are appropriate. So the important thing is to say that there's a correct color scheme. So there's certain color schemes you try not to use together. For those who are deaf, there is important to have some visual messages on screen so they can read what is happening or they'd have someone there doing sign language so that they can read the sign language that is being displayed. So if you've got a physical handicap, then it'd be something like a brainwave control device, which attaches onto the brain and those signals then, and the information is passed directly to the interface. If the user is blind and they can't see what's going on in the screen or what they are trying to write, it's important that they have some devices to support them. So we've got a braille printer. Now I know it isn't an interface in itself, but it actually produces an output which blind people can read. So it is actually accepted within the exam. Now you've got a braille keyboard. Now you can see the dots on the keyboard, which represent different letters, different numbers, different symbols, which can be read by the user so that they can interact with the device. We've got loss of arm movement, for example, paralysis uh, of the whole body, which will have different devices of support. So we've got a sip and puff switch, which is actually an assistive technology which uses ear pressure to send signals to the device by sipping or blowing into a wand or straw looking device. We've also got things like eye movement trackers, where again there's a headset on the user and there is some information on the screen and using eye movements and closing of the eyes and blinking allows the user to pick different information off the screen to communicate. For those who are visually impaired, we could have something like a screen magnifier. So you can hover over different pictures or different text in order to make the text information much larger so that the user can read it. We've got font configuration, which is the ability to change the font size within the interface to allow the user to read it. After this, I'm going to be doing some tutorials on the exam papers uh, about the type of answers that are accepted and what is needed to get the different marks.